almost saved, almost saved. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you tonight for what you have been doing in Times Square Church and in this city. Lord, you have been good. You have been gracious. But Lord, all through the, ever since this church has been founded by the Holy Ghost, we have loved the word. It's been based on the true revelation of Jesus Christ through his revealed word. Now, I need you tonight. I need you to speak to me and through me. I ask you to sanctify me, give me clean hands and a pure heart. Let the Spirit of the Lord God be upon me from this moment. I take your authority, Father, in Jesus' name, over every principality and power of darkness, every demonic influence, everything that would hinder the Word of God, and you're commanded, Satan, and all your hordes to leave. You have no place in this church. You cannot hinder the Word of God from going forth. So let the Spirit and power of God be upon me. In Jesus' name, amen. So, sister in this church, wrote me a letter recently and uh, described a very vivid dream she had about the coming of the Lord. I'll try to recall it as, as uh, she gave it to me in the letter, and I hope I'm sticking close to giving exactly what she said, if I recall it correctly. In her dream, she was sitting in a restaurant, a beautiful restaurant with a big glass wall uh, in front of her, and she was sitting by the window. And it was a beautiful scene, beautiful country scene in a little town. There was a little uh, pond there and some fish. And just sitting there and everybody was uh, talking, small talk as people do at a restaurant. Just a nice summer day. And all of a sudden, as she looked out the window, she saw people changing and, into white robes and they were being lifted just absolutely lifted right off the earth and they were gathering in the heavens and she it was the most glorious uh, picture she said isn't that beautiful she turned to people around and said look isn't that beautiful and suddenly she realized she was the only one seeing it others in the restaurant were dumped on they didn't know what she was talking about and she got up in this dream and went to the window and, and she said this is the coming of the lord jesus has sent his angels to gather his saints it's gorgeous it's beautiful look they're all ascending into the heavens and she was enraptured just watching this beautiful sight all these people from everywhere being taken into glory and all of a sudden she said wait a minute i'm supposed to be with them i, I i'm supposed to be going and i'm i'm here and she thought, I got to get out of this restaurant. She thought maybe it's because she was enclosed and she had to get out in the open. She, she ran up and down. There were no windows. There were no doors. She couldn't get out. And panic hit her spirit. She, she said, I've got to get out of here. And she was struggling it up because it was the most beautiful thing. And she said, I am saved. I'm supposed to be going with them. And in her panic, she woke up. And she said, I'll never forget it. It was almost saved. Almost taken, but wasn't taken. And I don't know if that sister's here tonight or not, but I, that, that letter made an impact on me, that dream. I, I get so many, but this is one dream that made an impact. Jesus tells us of another woman who was almost saved. Lot's wife. Almost saved. I'm going to I'll go to Genesis 19, and let's just get a little uh, background of this uh, woman. Genesis, the 19th chapter. Almost saved. Chapter 19 of Genesis. And there came two angels to Sodom at even, and Lot sat at the gate of Sodom, and Lot seeing them arose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. And he said, Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night, wash your feet, ye shall rise up early and go on your ways. And they said, nay, but we will bide in the street all night. Try that in New York. <clears throat> and he pressed upon them greatly, and they turned in unto him and entered into his house. And he made them a feast and did bake unleavened bread, and they did eat. But before they laid down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house round about, both old and young, all the people from every quarter, and they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men which came in to thee this night? Bring them out unto us that we may know them. And what that actually means that we may rape them. Commit sodomy. And Lot went out 
at the door unto them and shut the door after him. And he said, I pray you, brethren. I would not have called them brethren. And I said, uh, and, and I and said, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. Behold, now I have two daughters. Folks, this I can't believe. It's so mind boggling because I've got two daughters. And what this man suggested is incomprehensible to me. Behold, now I have two daughters which have not known man. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you and do you to them as is good in your eyes. Can you imagine that? And only and, uh, and unto these men do nothing, for therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. And they said, stand back. And they said again, this one fellow came in to sojourn and he will needs to be a judge. Now we will deal worse with thee than with them. They pressed sore upon the man, even Lot, and came near to break the door. But the men put forth their hand and pulled Lot into the house to them and shut the door. They smote the men that were at the door. The house was blindness, both small and great, so they wearied themselves to find the door. Now, if you go on to it, the angel, I won't read any further. The angel says, uh, uh, get yourselves together and go. And you remember the story. We'll pick it up uh, as we go here now. Praise the Lord. Now, let me talk to you about uh, Lot's wife. If Jesus says, remember Lot's wife, you mark it down. He has a good reason. Anytime I read Jesus said, if it's in red letters, I listen. More than any other time, I listen because Jesus said it. Jesus said, remember Lot's wife. There's a lesson in this, and I want you to think about it. Uh, Lot, when he broke away from Abraham and uh, went their separate ways, remember the scripture says that Lot set his face toward Sodom. Beautiful, at that time, beautiful pasture land, and he set his face. Now, there's no record of his being married at the time. Evidently, Lot found his wife in Sodom. She was evidently born in Sodom, raised in Sodom, and, and she was from that lifestyle. We, we know, though, that Lot was a very righteous man, and so she had the knowledge of God. She had an uncle, uh, uh, his uncle. Uh, Lot, Lot had Reverend Abraham up on the hillside praying, this woman was under the focus and influence of one of the great prayer warriors of all time, Abraham, a man to whom God listened as a friend. So she had great power of prayer behind her. She had a righteous man teaching her. And uh, she also had had angels warning her and taking her out of the city. Now, Sodom and Gomorrah had fallen into such depravity, remember, that God says that's enough. He sends two angels to get a man's eye-level view of it before he would send judgment. These two men, angels, now they, they, they came in the form of man. They, they didn't look like angels. They looked like, well, I hope they look better than I do, but I mean, they, they, eyes, hands, feet. You know what I'm talking about. Now, Lot is sitting as a judge at the gate of the city. He welcomed people who came in to the city, especially strangers. He sees these two men. He welcomes them. And, they say, and he says, welcome to Sodom. And they, they, he said, come to my house. Come, my wife and I will feed you. And are you staying overnight? Yes, we're staying overnight. And at the first, I don't believe they gave the reason why we're there. It, in fact, it was probably only after the Sodomites gathered to try to rape the angels that they finally gave Lot the reason why they were there. That these were gods represented and they'd been sent. They had the power to judge. These angels brought the fire. They brought the judgment with them. All they had to do is speak the word and Sodom would be burned in a holocaust. And uh, if you follow the picture, they, they said, no, we're going to stay on the streets. We're going to just sleep on the streets tonight. They wanted to know what was going on in the middle of the night. I don't think they would have slept. They would have walked about the city looking at the at, at the, the terrible depravity. And Lot said, no, you can't. In other words, he knew it was unsafe for them to be on the streets. Now, if you think Sodom was wicked, try to imagine these men sleeping uh, anyway, outside the doors of this church, anywhere, sleeping here. Now, there are people that sleep on the street, but not well-dressed people, not normal people are sleeping on the streets. They would be mugged. 
they 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 would be uh, attacked. They would have they would never last through the night, even here in the city. It gives you some idea how wicked New York and American society has become as well. <clears throat> knew they were in danger, so they take these two men to the house. Now, uh, these men are walking with Lot, and evidently these angels were very attractive men. They were handsome men. And as they are going, uh, sodomites, homosexuals, the city had been given over to homosexuality, and the men are watching Lot take these two men into their home, into his home, and the word spreads all over. They, they get in the house, and uh, Lot and his wife prepare a feast, and they're sitting there, uh, feasting, and I'm, I'm sure they're just talking about the things of God. They've not yet told of their uh, reason for their being there. And suddenly there's a racket outside because, you now this house evidently uh, was an individual house. It was not an apartment. So they gathered around the house, especially the front door. And there were old granny type gays. There were young boys looking gays. This, these were all men, the Bible says old and young, gathered around that door and began to pound on the door and say, send them out. And Lot knows what's happening. He's been in this city. He knows exactly what they have in mind. And Lot goes out, shuts the door behind him. He said, these are my guests. He said, you're not going to touch them. I know what you have in mind, but you can't touch them. And they're making a racket. They're pressing in. And Lot says, well, look, I've got two daughters. I'll send them out. Do with what you want. Now, I, this I can never in my lifetime understand. I don't know how any normal person can understand. I don't think it can be explained other than the man was temporarily insane. How does a father send his two daughters out? No wonder they laid with him had no respect for him. No wonder. They committed incest with their own father because they lost all respect. Can you imagine how those girls were trembling inside when this, they hear this mob out there to send those daughters and have more consideration for two men he doesn't even know than for his own daughters. Folks, we have stuff in New York happening just as bad. Like the man whose little girl was crying so much, stuck her in a radar or, or what do you call that, microwave and pushed the button trying to roast his own daughter. Folks, we have stuff like that going on. Uh, human nature is the same. That's the devil himself. There's such a racket out there. They, they, they're they going insane. They said, we don't want the women. We want the men. The angels reach out, grab him by the collar and pull him in and shut the door. Reach out their hand and smite them with blindness. Now, can you imagine the scene? They're totally blind. They can't even find the door. They're stumbling over everybody. They're trying to, let me at him, let him at him, let me at him. And they're telling Lot, Lot, because you wouldn't send them out, we're going to get you, we're going to do worse to you than we were to those men. You talk about being sodomized and raped, you wait when we get our hands on you. Now, folks, there is such a blindness, there's such a judicial blindness, that people who are under the wrath of God don't even know it. These men were stricken by the wrath of God, and they're still struggling, falling over each other, trying to get to the door. Totally blind. And they still don't see it as the judgment of God, and their lust is still burning like fire. And that's the way it's going to be when Jesus comes. Even when the hot coals fire from heaven, even when there's judgment, those who are on the wrath of God will still be seeking their pleasures. That's why Rock Hudson, even toward his last days, he was skin and bone, knowing his dying of age was still going to the bars in San Francisco trying to connect. That's why there are, there are age-stricken people on these streets who are just weeks away from death, and they're still in the gay bar, still down there, looking for one more connection, one more night of pleasure, and those who know they're dying are still having intercourse with them. Amazing. The angel said, let me tell you why we're here. The Lord has sent us, and we are going to destroy this place. The Lord has sent us to destroy it. Chapter 19, verse 13. Go, get your family, get out of this place. Now, had you been in Sodom that night, 
you would not see any sign of judgment. There were no warnings. There, there was no omen anywhere. There was no flaming sword in the sky. There was no smell of judgment. If you had looked out that night, you would have seen the merchants closing up their shops, going home. You would have seen the mothers gather their children out of the backyards and the children are being prepared for bed. You would have seen the shepherds coming in from the fields and their sheep dog herding all the herds into their areas and the shepherds going to their barracks. You would have seen the bakers shutting down their ovens. You would have seen a city ready to go to sleep and you would have seen a whole host of homosexuals staggering down the streets helping each other trying to find their way home. And yet you would have seen late at night, you would have seen one man shot in Sodom. His name is Lot, and he's running around to his sons-in-law, his two sons-in-law, knocking on the door and saying, there are two angels that have visited us, and they told us that God's going to destroy this city tomorrow, and we've got to meet at my house and leave and get out first thing in the morning. And the Bible says they laughed at him. They mocked him. He, he was as one who mocked, they said. They, they said, Lot, go to bed, Pop. Just go to bed, Dad. Don't worry about it. And when they shut the door and said, Alzheimer's. He's lost it. It's crazy. Angels, judgment, burning. Flee the city. You would have seen no sign of judgment whatsoever. And it was a sleepless night, I'm sure. I, I think Lot's wife stayed up all night and she, she's she's looking around in the bedroom and she's crying and she says, oh honey, it can't be. Look at this, this beautiful pottery my mother gave to me. And she goes around the kitchen, my kitchen, my drapes. Lot, we spent a whole lifetime sweating and getting this together now why didn't they give us a week we could have hauled this stuff out at least you say oh, I wouldn't have been like that oh come on come on now how many of you have been after your stuff stuff stuff's going to keep a lot of people out of heaven nothing but stuff Stuff in your garage, stuff in your basement, stuff in your attic, stuff in your kitchen, stuff in your bedroom, stuff, stuff, stuff. We got a lot of women married to their stuff. I told you a preacher's wife who, who did white carpets all over her living room and all over the, the first, first floor, white carpets. And when they came, the pastor said, uh, don't get excited and we went down and he took off his shoes he said you better take them off brother take off my shoes because i didn't want to get on her white carpet imagine the white carpets how many have white carpets <laughs> the bible says lot lingered he lingered they were having a hard time. It, it wasn't the judgment. It wasn't leaving this city. It's leaving the stuff. All these things that she had gathered. The two angels. Lord said being merciful. They brought him forth without the city. Now folks the first thing in the morning. The angels had to wake, awaken these people. And, and the Bible says arise. The angel said Take your wife and your two daughters, get out, flee, lest they be consumed. Get out, flee, run. And the Bible says Lot lingered. The two angels then took them by the hand forcibly, and the Bible said they led them forth outside the city, and they cried, Escape for thy life, look not behind thee, escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. And folks, here's a picture. There are four people. I don't know if they're two miles away now before it happens. I don't know. But there are four people running toward the mountain. Lot, his wife, and his two daughters. The two sons-in-laws are still in Sodom. 
and the sun was just now rising. And you picture the scene, any, any mid-sized city with the bakers stoking the ovens, the stores opening, and the women with the baskets already at the fruit markets, men scurrying off to work. It's another normal day. Lots to sons in laws get up and head for work, and they look it out, they look bright sunshine. There, where's the judgment? There's no judgment. Poor dad. Tonight we'll we'll tease him. We'll wait till midnight, till this day passes, when judgment was supposed to come, and we'll go to his house, we'll just have a good laugh with him. And all of a sudden, there's a little dark cloud gathers, and people are sniffing because there's a little sulfuric smell. People are sniffing, and what's that smell? It smells like sulfur. And it gets thicker and thicker, and the sun is clouded. And there's just a little uneasiness of the city, and Lot's two son and laws are looking at each other with that questionable look. Could it be? And then suddenly, soot, and then little cinders begin to fall. Little black cinders begin to fall. Little pieces of brimstone begin to fall. And over here on a piece of canvas, a little fire starts. And over here, it falls on a grass roof. And suddenly there's a flame here and a flame here. And people running, saying, fire, fire. But it's getting darker, quicker, and quicker because the angels have now left the city. They stretch forth their hands, and the judgment has begun. Folks, I don't know if it took half an hour. I don't know if it took an hour. But I believe the judgment began to accumulate. Those brimstones got bigger and bigger. And suddenly fires are burning all over that city. People are trying to run. But within a mile radius, they run as fast as they can. There's just as much brimstone falling, and suddenly it's in their hair. It's around them. They are being suffocated. There's a suffocating sulfuric. It's coming out of the ground now. There is slime. There is brimstone, and there is fire. And suddenly there's a holocaust. Everybody's screaming. Everybody's running. It's judgment day. And God kept his word. And while Sodom is burning, and you can still, I, I believe Lot and his two daughters and his wife could smell the sulfur. I believe they could hear the crackling of the flames. And I believe the suffocating in the air was there. And the, the conversation must have been in something like this. But dad, can't we just stop a moment and look back? Our husbands are there. Can't we grieve at least a moment? He says, the angel said, don't look back. Keep moving. And Lot's wife said, everything we've owned and she's crying and she's bemoaning everything that she's lost and left behind she says i can't take it just just one look and he says no we're moving on the angel said don't look back don't look back keep moving or you'll get caught that's going to spread the brimstone is spreading because it's going to take gomorrah it's going to take these other little cities they told us We've got to get away from all of it to a place of safety. Keep running to the mountain. Flee from the wrath of God. Flee. Run. Don't turn back. I don't even believe the plot knew what had happened. He's running ahead and his two daughters and she falls further and further behind. And suddenly she says, that's enough. It's enough. I think in her heart she's hoping that the fire is a one-hour affair, the judgment is just a warning, and somehow her house, her stuff will be spared. This is her home, this is her life. It's all she's known. It's been pleasure, it's been fun, it's been, it's been life, it's her lifestyle. And she stops. I believe Lot and the daughters just kept moving on. They, it could have been half hour, could have been hour before they even knew she was missing. And she turns. And looks at Sodom. Now folks, that look is not just a moment. That look suggests a lingering, longing look back to her old lifestyle, back to her old ways. And folks, the, the, the brimstone is coming closer and closer and she knows it, but she's transfixed. She, something happened in her heart that's going to be expressed in her very physical uh, body. Her heart has grown hard. She, she is angry. She is longing. 
and she's weeping over losing her past. And if you know what the scripture says, that that brimstone and that salty brine begin to fall on her, and by now she doesn't care. She said, I've lost everything anyhow. And suddenly she's suffocating. And I don't believe she even could take time to fall to her knees because I believe it just came up. In fact, the Bible suggests a mound of salt. And the Bible said she turned to a pillar of salt, rock hard salt. Can you imagine a week later when people came from around the herd about the Holocaust and they come and they pass this pillar of salt and they see the outline of a person uh, with this face, with the face headed towards Sodom. And what an incredible uh, witness it was, a witness of hardness, an absolute witness to a hardening. Now, Jesus, remembering this, says, remember Lot's wife. I want you to go to Luke, the 17th chapter. Seventeenth chapter of Luke. And let's start reading verse 26. Love it. Look at it for just a minute. Hold, hold your place. These Old Testament stories. It's not just because God loves telling stories. It's not just a storybook. The Bible said everything that happened in the Old Testament are examples to us upon whom the ends of the world have come. There are examples. They have meaning. Now Jesus, it, it, that's what he's saying in verse 26 here. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it also be in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage till the day that Noah entered into the ark. The flood came, destroyed them all. Likewise, also as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. What Jesus is saying, just before I come, it's going to be replay of the days of Lot. In other words, if you want to know how it is just before I come, go back and study what happened during Lot's time because it's going to repeat itself. It's going to be the same thing. As it was in the days of Lot, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. Same thing. In that day, he which should be upon the housetop and his what? Stuff. In the house. Let him not come down and take it away. And he that is in the field, that means your career, your job, your business. Let him likewise not return back. Remember Lot's wife. You know what he's saying? She was almost saved. She had angels pluck her out. She was out of danger. She was out of judgment. She was on her way to the mountain, which is Jesus Christ, the rock. She was on her way. She'd been delivered from the bondage. She'd been plucked right out of Sodom. Everybody else is perishing. She was saved temporarily. She was almost saved. She was told she could be saved. If all she did was hold out a little longer, if she had just been obedient, if she had just pressed on a little longer, she would have been saved. She would have been out of the danger zone. Folks, a lot of you are, a lot of, are listening to me right now. You are about to become a pillar of salt. I meet pillars of salt all over the United States. They're all over New York City. They're pillars of salt. Their hearts are hard as rock. Because that woman who is now petrified is a physical example of a spiritual condition. It shows what happens when you still have a longing for your old life, your old friends, and your old ways. When there's still some of Sodom left in you. You used to run around and smoke and drink and curse and play around in sex. You used to do all these things and you had friends that you had fun with. You did all these things and now you're serving the Lord. God said, get out, flee to the rock. 
And you started, you went on, you sang the songs of Zion. You were talking about the Lord all the time. You read his Bible, you prayed and you worshiped. You were on your way. And what happened? The world was still in your heart. You never gave up the world and the longing and the lingering, looking back to your old friends. I'm going to tell you something. If you've got any old friends that were in the world that are still playing around in the back roads of your memory, in Jesus' name, get them out. Lay them down. I don't care if it's an old lover. I don't care who it is. If you've got some old place that you used to hang out, or used to shoot drugs, or some portal theater, or some woman's house, or some man's house, and you used to go there and have intercourse, and you played around. Get it out of your memory. Lay it down and move on. Don't look back. And if you look back, you're going to get just what she got. You become a pillar of salt. That's a hard heart. Folks, the hard hearts are not down in gay bars in the village. That's not the hardest hearts. The hardest hearts are not the uh, men prating around dressed as women. The hard hearts are not uh, the gamblers out here. They're not the drug addicts, not the people sleeping on the streets. The hardest hearts I've ever met are those who once started out, who were almost saved, who had tasted the goodness of the Holy Ghost, who knew the word of God, have been touched by heaven, and they turned their backs, went back. They're the hardest parts I've ever met. You can't move them. They're pillars of salt. They are testimonies to the whole world of what happens when you don't get the world out of your system. I met one of those pillars of salt recently. A young man who graduated from Timothy House. This young man was was on fire for God apparently. He, he could dance, he could sing, he could praise the Lord, tell everybody how love Jesus, witness to other people, and, and you would think, boy, this if anybody makes it, he's going to make it. But there was something in his heart for the world. His old lust had never been laid down, he never dealt with it. And it took his heart. Poison in his spirit. And he went out to his old neighborhood and when I met him not too long ago he was high his eyes glassy his high and the smell of cigarettes on his breath I said how you doing he said I'm doing just fine doing great love the Lord going on with the Lord you couldn't say a word to him nothing I said get through to him he, he now believes he can smoke, he can drink, he can take drugs. He's going to heaven. He, he said, I've never had such peace as I have. I have absolute peace, Pastor Dave. I am so peaceful. I've reached the place of the Lord that I've never known. He said, just wonderful peace. Stoned. Folks, I don't, I don't think it's, I, I think it's rather ironic that it's called stoned because it leads to hardness. Absolute hardness. That that young man could be like like I, I've seen backslidden preachers who, who would want, once on fire for God go out and become alcoholics, come out in the street corner drunk and preach up a storm. And think they're on the way to heaven. Now God put this on my heart tonight. Because I am sure as I stand here now, when Jesus said, remember, watch, wife, he is saying just that. Get your eyes off the stuff. He said, when judgment's about the at the door. There's not going to be any warning. Folks, if judgment comes tomorrow to this city and the riots break out and the fires begin to burn and, and, and it's almost impossible for weeks to get to a job site and, and uh, there, there are explosions. There are there is racial tension and hatred breaking out and erupting on all sides and judgments are falling. There's not going to be any warning on radio or television. I don't think there's going to be a lightning thunderstorm that would shake us up the night before. There'll be no flaming sword in the sky. There'll be no omens. There'll be no 
other warnings than what we have received by the Holy Ghost and by the prophets of God and his watchmen who have been warning us. He said we're to be pre prepared and we're to be ready. But folks, suddenly, just as sure came to Sodom, it's going to be here. We may have angels walking these streets as men right now, getting an eye view level of our depravity. And I know what Billy Graham said is true. If God doesn't judge America, he's going to have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. But I want to tell you, when the fires begin and the judgment is here, there, there are going to be some people so hard and so blind, they're saying, well, let it rain, let it burn, I'm going to heaven, everything's all right. And they're going to wake up in hell. Almost saved. Now you think about that woman standing there out of danger, supposedly, so close to the mountain, and she turns. Which way are you headed? Where's your face headed? Now you may have your feet going this way and your head starting to turn that way. No. Your head has to go the same direction as your feet. You've got to turn your eyes on Jesus. You keep running to the rock. You keep fleeing to him. You go to Jesus and he'll deliver you from the wrath that's to come. Hallelujah. Those who once used to be a testimony of the power of Jesus Christ are becoming a testimony of the most hardening power on earth, absolutely hardened by sin. Before I close, I was thinking about it. Some of you heard me tell about Moses Berg, the, the leader of the children of God. At one time, children of God had over 5,000 in their organization. Moses Berg, remember him some 30 Five years ago at Huntington Beach, California, he directed a youth program on the beach, a witnessing program, about 40 young people involved. But Moses Berg had a lust problem that he never dealt with. He had two sons, nice kids. And this man, because he would not give up the world, he would not give up his pet lust. God turned him over to his sin. That man got a heart that was so hard. I, I was blown away one day when I was at Melody Land holding a crusade. There were 5,000 people in that night and the altars were filled and someone came in and said, there's a big demonstration outside. And I went out. It was Moses Berg and his sons and those kids were, were, had signs condemning me and condemning the meeting and, and, and uh, it was just awful. And uh, I was so flabbergasted. I took one of the boys aside and said, what's going to happen? Did your dad know you're doing this? He said, well, my dad's right there. He started it. And the man had turned on me and, and hated me. And I didn't have any, I, I didn't do anything to him. And these were many of our young people that had been saved under our ministry. And uh, he insisted that everybody that got married in his organization, he got the first night with every bride. That was the beginning. When I heard that, I knew that this man had become a pillar of salt. It's a man who could have been such a teacher, such a powerhouse for God, turned his back. And folks, I watched over the years, I watched him take one of my associates from Team Challenge, a young lady that used to be so on fire. She'd stand on the street corner and preach with fire. People would get saved. She, she was a, a head of the girls' department and so on fire for God. But, but she could not lay down her lust. And you see, when people have lust, they're attracted to other people who have the same problem. They always find each other. She, they found her. They came to New York. And those in various churches and in ministries that had this thing in them, they were attracted to that. Sucked up into it. And folks, they, 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 they took kids from all over the United States. And then, three or four years later, out came the Mo letters. They called himself Moses, Moses Bird, the Mo letters, M-O. They'd send those letters to me. And folks, you couldn't believe four-letter words, curse words all through it. He turned those girls into prostitutes, and they called it uh, uh, honey evangelism. I'll be your honey. I'll give my body to you if you'll come and join us. 
They sent 30, 40 girls to Gaddafi's court to try to seduce Gaddafi in his whole court. And they headquartered there. And I watched over the years, his son commit suicide. I don't know what happened. The other boy died and I don't know what happened to him. His wife left. God finally saved her out of it and, and uh, brought the daughters in law. In fact, years later, they were one of my meetings and told me the whole story of what happened to him. He wound up in a trailer in, in Algeria as a wild animal. And he would pace back and forth like a lion in a cage, back and forth, night and day. He couldn't find any more pleasure, but he was still going through all of the forms of, of pleasure, the old pleasure, but nothing satisfied him, tried everything. And this man, back and forth, lost his mind. And he's wondering, I, that's the last I heard of, last I heard of Moses Burke. He was wandering back and forth like a wild lion in a cage, demon possessed. A pillar of salt. Now, folks, I don't believe that sob stories get anybody to God. And I don't believe that uh, preaching only about wrath or scaring people about the kingdom of God, when the scare is gone, your religion has gone. But I'm telling you, this is not games, fun and games. This is life and death. If you're sitting in this building tonight and the Lord made it clear to me that I had to give an invitation to some of you that have been just looking back, you've got an old hankering, an old thing that's coming up there. You've just got a, a look, a little look back to the world. You don't have to go that way. You ask the Holy Spirit tonight to take out of your heart everything out of your eyes and your heart that has to do with your past. Say, Jesus, I don't want anything of my past. I'm not going back. Some of you backslidden. Some of you sitting here now, you're already... The hardness is up to your knees. It's going to get to your loins and then it's going to get to your heart. When it gets to your heart, it's over. I know, as sure as I know my name, God told me there were a lot of people here tonight that had to wake up because you still have some of the world left in you. And some of you already turned aside you not only look back, you have walked back. And you need to turn and run to Jesus tonight with everything that's in you. Say, so, oh God, I remember Lot's wife. I do. I don't want to become a pillar of salt. Unreachable, untouchable, hardened to the gospel, hardened to truth. No more discernment. God keep me from that. Will you stand? Do you have a personal relationship with Christ I want to say let's pray God please forgive me I am a sinner and I repent and want to make Jesus the Lord of my life where do I begin praying something like this I, I need you to speak to me and through me I ask you to sanctify me give me clean hands and a pure heart that the Spirit of the Lord God be upon me from this moment I take your authority, Father, in Jesus' name, over every principality and power of darkness, every demonic influence, everything that would hinder the word of God, and you're commanding Satan and all your hordes to leave. You have no place in this church. You cannot hinder the word of God from going forth. So let the spirit and power of God be upon me. In Jesus' name, amen. Are you saved? Really? Repent. Believe. Get saved. Are you saved? Really? Please like and subscribe.